Okay, yeah. good. So that should be set up right then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my my usual strategy is I watch the the Discord restream, but then I also have Trav's stream open on a different monitor uh, with the yeah. volume turned off. If I have anyone's volume on, it's usually like just one of the people, that, uh, which lets me snipe their chat. Actually, it looks like Chroma joined the chat, so there's somebody that's going to be on the other chat today. Maybe Trav will go that way. Trav's talking in the wrong one. Does that mean we're uh, muted until then? Okay. <laughs> and that's what you think, but I think you're wrong. That works. Call me Dust Shadow. And then usually people figure out, yeah, just Shadow. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the West Coast Races. My name is Trav White. And with me on the mic, I have Aaron 2U2 and Shadow. They are my co host for the evening. And I will hand it off to them. Thank you. All right. Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Aaron to you, too. Shadow? You want to Shadow, yourself? this is Shadow. Hey. Yes. So we are I'm going to Shadow. be broadcasting this race. Uh, looks like we'll be starting here pretty soon. Everyone's ready except for Trav, so we'll get going here in just a minute. Uh, looks like we got everyone stream four people tonight. So uh, that's pretty exciting. We were a little worried we weren't going to get much of a race, but it looks like uh, enough people have come through. And I believe after the uh, West Coast race, we're going to be doing some horse head percent runs, assuming everyone still wants to. So that's always fun. Uh, so the West Coast race, right, that just means they're only doing the Western continent 
in the game, right? So that's just going to be the first three palaces, and then that's the end of the race, correct? Yes, that's uh, for the most part. It's all keys, but like half or a little less than yeah. half, maybe. But uh, you'll we'll see. People do a few different things here. You still have to follow the rules, but uh, they'll they'll die a little bit more freely here than they would in all keys. It looks like there's a countdown to the race starting right now. We are. Yep. So, uh, who won last week again? I need to look up these facts. I gotta have all the information handy so I can uh, keep everybody entertained with my stats. I do not remember who won last weekend. I remember I was in the kitchen lurking during those races. Oh, it was Dude. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I'd, for I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, we had a Dude and, Ro and Riak were racing right about to the end, and I think Riak had some bad luck on, uh, um, uh, what do you call the, on Rebo, and it kind of flipped out on him, so. And Dude, of course, um, I've, I've definitely seen some of uh, his work uh, make its way to YouTube and um, and seen how uh, full he, the leaderboard is with the name Dude. Oh, he is, uh, he's pretty much got the clean sweep in the main category right now, and I think he's might be aiming at the other one, too. He's been in hibernation for a while, but somebody woke him up, and now he's come back to, uh, <laughs> to, to try to take every category again. Looks like Chroma was the only one who got a bag. Uh, that could matter, but in this race, I think the, the people here, by and large, are experienced enough that they don't uh, they don't worry too much about it anymore. They can go and attack level down and still finish P3 without too much of a problem. Right, so picking up the bag, that would save a little bit of time at the beginning. Uh, but you're not going to get to that next level, and you can always go back and pick it up again later. Well, well I'm guessing actually, in this. Yeah, what I was actually referring to was the uh, the, the 50p bag that's in the Magic Cave. That in the the high tier all keys runs, there's a, a manipulation to try to get it because it saves oh. a considerable amount of time if you can. Um, usually, Schmitty gets the uh, the 50p bag in the forest though, and he didn't, so it's a little surprising. I see, see. That's what I thought you were referring to. Was the uh, was the fifty point bag in the forest right at the start? Yeah, and that's uh, that's definitely a, a good strat for people who are just kind of learning the game, or people who really want to make sure they get attacked for out of P one. Because unless you're practiced in the game, it's so much harder to do it. I mean, myself, I probably lose two minutes in just this category if I'm attack three versus attack four. Um, so that's yeah. my skill level compared to these guys who are all <laughs> a step or two ahead. My personal skill level is that I just finally beat this game for the first time about two months ago after 20 plus years of trying to beat the game. And even when I when I was uh, doing my complete playthrough, uh, even for that, I was trying to think of a strategy for how I was going to approach the game, and I just went through like the first two palaces in Death Mountain a handful of times. I'm like, all right, do I want to like grind and then do Death Mountain first, and then go back and do the palaces and and try to just collect 9,000 9, points and level up a whole bunch? And that was ultimately sort of the strategy I use in that 50 point bag at the beginning I'm like all right I'm good enough I don't need that to get like an initial life level up I'm gonna come back and get it later after I'm like close to getting attack leveled up and then as I'm like you know using my rookie strategies of just like playing palace one over and over again and skipping the crystal by the time I was done with that, that 50 point bag was was completely meaningless. <laughs> that, yeah, that does tend to be the case. You don't really need it if, when you wait, for the most part. Sometimes waiting on the experience can be good, but it, when you, if you're willing to redo a palace to get experience, it tends to not be so much. So, um, yeah, I kind of trace where everybody is right now. Uh, Chroma is still on the correct leveling. The other two are going to need some good luck. There are two. In the runs, there's two chances. There's two 50-50 chances to get a, a 200p bag or 
uh, a potion, a red potion, and in this particular level, you want all the pea bags you can get. Uh, actually, right now, none of them have any spells, so magic's completely worthless. Uh, th these guys all push back the shield spell to later, because um, it doesn't really save time doing it later, but it sets up a manipulation that does save time. Unless, you know, you just get super lucky, but nobody counts on that. And that is one of the very fascinating things about speedrunning is where they may even be doing manipulations, but it looks like they're just playing through the game normally. And like one of the things I always see, and I don't even necessarily realize it's a manipulation unless the unless the runner mentions it while they're playing the game, but they'll do is just something like stab their sword before going down the elevator or something like and I guess maybe it's mostly just for timing, or, or I don't know how how is that working? Is that just for timing, or is that to get like Link's uh, pixel position on the screen correct, like his X position? Uh, sorry, what were you referring to again? I actually have their chat open and got distracted by something they were saying. Uh, uh just like the little manipulations they do uh, to get enemies in the right position and, and stuff. Uh, like I've noticed like strategies like. Before they go down an elevator, you like swipe your sword against the wall a couple times. Oh, yeah. Most of the time, that's manipulation. Sometimes it's just people, you know, angry that the elevators are going too slow. So you <laughs> see, Trav got a bag there. That's the first of the two chances. Chroma got a red jar. Uh, Trav still needs to get like a random 50p bag or to get the last one to get out of here with attack four. So he, he still has a shot, and we'll see. Um, if he didn't get the bag and he's already got life two, if somebody gets life two in this level, they've given up on attack four, but Hippie never really tries for attack four, so um, he just kind of goes with it. Schmitty got a bag, so he's still alive too, but since they didn't get the uh, the 50p bag earlier, they're all um, basically 50 experience behind the, the normal all keys leveling. We'll see, this last enemy Chroma's fighting here is the, uh, the second 50-50. So he didn't get it, so oof. Schmitty's the only one who has a chance of getting out of here with attack four. And of course, that's the biggest RNG factor, probably, is just whether or not you get the point bag or the magic drop when you need it. Right. And in certain situations, it could be either. And I think especially if they were doing a full run later on, Sometimes getting that magic drop is gonna be is gonna be clutch. Sometimes getting the getting the point drop, especially when you're when you're trying to get to the right level, is more important. Now, all of them got through horse head pretty quickly, but Schmitty was a, a little bit more aggressive than the others. Uh, he was doing double hits on horse head, which is. Uh, something that people work on for the horse head percent runs, which they're going to be doing later, so he seems to already be in the mode. In fact, I think last week, um, while he was practicing, or at some point, he actually broke his own, uh, his, his PB and had a time that I think would be second on the board, except he used uh, an illegal ROM, <laughs> so it doesn't count. <laughs> um, uh, pretty particular on a, a big leaderboard like uh, the Zelda one that you can't use. Uh, modded ROMs, even if the only mod was to just show the pixel count once you finished beating Horsehead, but, uh, you know, that's just how it goes, so. Right. Well, so, the... Some of them may still go to try to get Attack 6 by the end of P2. That's kind of the next benchmark. That's where, if you don't get Attack 4, you're basically, like, around a thousand experience behind that you have to catch up. And that can be pretty difficult. It relies on bag luck um, throughout Death Mountain and into P2. And um, Trav, and I know Trav doesn't, and, and Hippie just, they don't worry about it at all. Chroma did everything right, but got two bad drops. So he wasn't able to get it. And Schmitty, he didn't get the first drop. Um, so if he would have gotten the bag in the forest, he's probably kicking himself a little bit for it because uh, he normally does. If he'd gotten that, he would be at attack four. And it helps a bit in Death Mountain. And it helps going into P5, or excuse me, P2, because you can skip a whole lot. But by P3, even if you're an attack level down, 
it doesn't change too much. You just have to realize it so that the uh, um, the blue IKs that you have to fight there take a little bit more damage. Okay. It looked like Hippie had an encounter leaving uh, Parappa Desert, so that might have set him back a little bit. It looks like he's, he's third to have left after getting jumped. Yeah, I missed that one. I was uh, I was wondering if he was going down to get the heart or something, but then when he came out of the, I just saw him leaving in a, a battle screen, and when he came out of it, I noticed that he was just in the middle of middle of the desert. So yeah. I'd assume that's not anything intentional. He must have just he must yeah, have just run into and run into an enemy. Yeah, and uh, that's it's not the the biggest factor in this run, but it's actually pretty important skipping the encounters because I mean, not only do can encounters you know hit, take cause you to take damage and weaken and you know that sense slow you down but they're like 10 to 12 seconds a piece you get a road encounter and then it's like three to four but um yeah 10 might be a little high it's it's close to that but like uh chroma got a clean walk all the way to bagu and trav did not and how oh, he had a second encounter so that's rough. But you see Hippie, uh, he didn't get any, but then he ran into a fairy, which is basically a half encounter as well. So Hippie just slid right past Trav because of those encounters. Trav taking three total. Yeah. He's He's got to be hurting on that. Oh, right, and then that, that, too. that always looks to me like one of the most intimidating things about learning to run the game is it might be an easy thing to to learn but to memorize all of the different places on the map that you have to learn manipulations for to avoid encounters and then to still actually miss them knowing that there's still a huge luck factor involved yeah well there's like there's a few tricks that you can use to help you um like, uh, you'll see them pause occasionally. If you hit the, the pause button, and when you've done the overworld enough, you get a pretty good feel about when to do that. And so you can pause the game and kind of see what they're doing. You know, peek, peek at uh, what the enemy, where the enemies are, and if you know what you're doing, you can react quick enough to kind of just peel out of that and, you know, decide which way you got to move. There's certain areas where people literally memorize every single encounter there is coming out of there and know how to react depending on where they spawn. Um, specifically that the first sections, leaving uh, the Prapa Cave into the Prapa Desert, that entire path going down to the heart and back can be scripted if you you know memorize it well enough. And I say memorize, but I think even like React has notes that he keeps up that shows the different routes and what to do with each one of them. So, depending on what, like, you would first identify, like, what enemy spawn you got, like, where they spawned, and then you would quickly refer to, refer to your notes on that and know what path you have to take to avoid the direction those enemies are going to go, that, it, you know, it's not necessarily random. Right, and... This is an, an NES game, which means the, the randomness is somewhat limited. Uh, there, like I, I think Riak had, and he's done some science in certain areas to, to really break down certain fights. Like uh, even the, the bag drops in P1, it's a huge uh, reset point to... Uh, to, in the in the Al Keys run to not get the bag luck that you need there. So he spent a lot of time trying to figure out all the different seeds that can drop RNG wise and how to manipulate it. And honestly, it's pretty difficult to master unless you can task the thing, which you know most people can't casually do while they're they're playing. So right, yeah. it's is it even a matter of okay, you get to this enemy, if you get to your sixth enemy for a certain. Category, the smaller large enemies that if you kill them on this frame then you will get this drop or is it something yeah. more like based on the frame that you started on or well or it seems the like you took the the rng at least in that segment starts when you enter the room 
Uh, so it's not... Okay. That seems to be true for all things like that. Like, I'd put some non-scientific effort into trying to figure out the, uh, the P3 jar drop at the beginning. And I found that it seemed like whenever I, I attacked it a certain way, I always got a jar. Except I couldn't always time that out perfectly because um, it's difficult <laughs> to hit something yeah. frame perfect every time. Now I'm trying to... Looks like Crab is right behind Hippie. And uh, so Chroma's a little bit ahead of both of them. Yeah, Chroma's got about 10 seconds on Hippie. Hippie looks like he's got about 10, 15 on Trav. And Schmitty has caught up a tremendous amount. He's right behind him now. Uh, yeah. he's, th he's going for the experience. You can see Trav's not worrying about it quite as much. Um, Schmitty is going a little bit harder. because, And he's not as used to not having attack four, so he might be pushing to get that a little bit more. Hippie snuck by Chroma, but that might be a, a false lead change because Chroma got slowed down by a level up, uh, which Hippie will eventually take. So, in fact, he got it right there. He was pretty close to soft locking. That was kind of risky. <laughs> yeah, if that you, uh, was right at the screen transition. Mm -hmm. So you know about that one, yeah? It's a uh... uh yeah. Hopefully, you know about it from. Not personal experience. <laughs> Not personal experience, but um, yes, I heard heard that mentioned a lot uh, in speedruns, and I'm like, I was always wondering what it was, and I think I was reading a reading a walkthrough of the game that just warned you to be careful that if you're leveling up, don't leave the screen you're on at the same moment that your point counter increases to that level or it gets stuck between trying to take you to a screen transition or taking you to the level up screen and game's over yep so something to avoid if at all possible but it's a fun way to lose a run uh depending on where <laughs> it happens just because it's so such a stupid way to to be done especially if you do the one uh, that happens more commonly after finishing P5, and you just soft lock the game, and <laughs> you kind of just have to take it. So, well, Hippie and Chroma, I got those jars almost identical, like timed very well. And well, they're both taking the baby route out. That's good. That's my route. Well, it's not my route. I actually saw Hippie do it and stole it from him, but I, uh, it's the safe route. It loses about two seconds to optimal, but. Uh, I'm not good at dodging the encounters down there, and I'm not willing to put the effort in to uh, get better. <laughs> so that that is two seconds that I will lose for quite a while. And in a race, I mean, it, it kind of is better to just be safe. Not not necessarily better because you can still lose time to the other racers, but it's better than than taking a death or or getting slowed down by the encounters if you don't pull off a riskier strategy successfully. Yeah. And you see Trav and Schmitty both, uh, they did not duck, and they got through pretty smoothly. Um, it's a little scary, but it's not that tricky of a thing to learn. So. But it, I guess it's, you know, how are you feeling? You know, what, how are your opponents doing? What, you do, what do you really want to do in the moment? There's a lot of little strats like that that sometimes people just change their mind in the moment about what they want to do. Oof. Hippie hit the uh, the boulder um, encounter, which shouldn't really happen. It's kind of kind of a rough one to eat. And now you see he's he's losing a little bit more time to set up a manipulation here. If you take that encounter right there, uh, you can usually walk the rest of the way to the sm swamp without getting any enemies. A random walk can still get you, but uh, the random walks aren't that common. Yeah, Chroma has pulled a solid five, five, seven seconds ahead, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got a whole screen, and a lot of that was there. the encounter Hippie took, which forced him to take an extra encounter that he had to wait for. Uh, I, yeah, Chroma took, they take the death abuse. I wouldn't, oof. 
I was gonna say Hippie's going to, but not if he died. He might change his mind. It's a, it's a small time save, and it's not something you would normally see in an all keys run because you need the lives a little bit more. But here, for the most part, you don't randomly die too much. So. And it looks like that he just go. Uh, I didn't see what what screen chroma came mm -hmm. out of. Did he just go and pick up the extra life? Yes, that one's pretty That's common. Fine. Uh, well, Hippie still took the death abuse. Interesting. So, but he must not be too worried about the rest of the race. Or he's trying to win and he's going to take every time save he can get. So. Now, I'm surprised Trav didn't take that because a lot of times, if you don't have full magic, you want to take the death abuse because it saves time in uh, Mido. Because you have to be able to cast jump and at magic one, you can only cast jump once. So he'll have to go visit the uh, the magic guy in town and refill before he can get that. Right, and that's one of the helpful things about taking the death abuse is that it also restores your life in magic, and is, aside from just getting you back to the other end of the screen a little bit faster. Right. I mean, the, the time saves about three seconds on the, the actual death abuse, but if you are saving time in town later, that could be like ten seconds. Uh, in fact, you could count if you really wanted to how long it takes Trav past the uh, when he walks past that door to go to the magic t person and come back and see how long it is. And Not the extra to, lives. You know, pick apart what Trav's doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> the extra lives doing a casual playthrough, I think especially when I was a kid, I was always looking for where are the extra lives or half be more extra lives somewhere like it's a like it's a mario game and and right. you should be able to co collect all these extra lives and i would wonder sometimes i play through the game and i come across extra lives times there's nothing there it's like what what what's what's with that what do they spawn randomly or something that confused my little uh that confused my little seven-year-old brain a lot and the second time I seriously tried playing the game in my early 20s, um, and I still didn't beat it that time, and part of the reason was I was reading strategies for how to get to and beat the Great Palace, which was the last thing I had to do, and they all said, go through the game and collect all the extra lives so that you have seven lives to burn getting to the Great Palace, and then <laughs> you'll restart there. I'm like, okay, so where are all the extra lives? And that it was then that I learned that don't respawn after a continue. I'm like, what? Yeah. So, so I'm like, all right, I got to restart the game. News th and then I just, I'm like, no, I made it so far. I have to try to beat it now with without the extra lives and I never could and then I gave up until I was in my mid 30s. Yeah. So to respond to something from chat, hi middling penguin. Uh this is all keys race run rules even though it's not an all keys run followed by the same race rules and the way that the races work is that you can game over. Uh I mean dying is, you know, deaths are actually pretty common, but you can game over and if you do the rule is you have to go back to exactly where you died. Uh, so if you died, um, like, say, getting the uh, the magic container in um, the bottom of, um, what do you call it? The bottom of Death Mountain. You go all the way down and get the magic container and then die immediately. You have to go all the way back to where you died before you can continue the run. So there's virtually no way to manipulate that to be a positive. Um, there is something, You're right? Well, you can you can take a death abuse here or there, and that can help. But you cannot uh, game over. You'll see. Uh, there's one room in P2 where the, or you might see some people take a death abuse. Um, and P3 has one or two rooms like that as well. It all just depends on where the characters are, you know, where they're going and so on. They'll do it for a magic refill or because they're already beat up or to just get um, out of the room quicker. Like all of those different things might come up uh, as a reason to take a death abuse. But to actually game over, there's only 
one scenario where people really game over and that's on purpose and that's when they've already died a lot early on and that way they can manipulate where they game over so when they restart they can get to that place really easy uh, a lot of times like going if you leave p2 with no extra lives or maybe i should say like you leave medicine cave and you have no lives left or something like that uh, a common place to take a game over is on one of the, the blocks that you have to break since you can just take the desert encounter there get beat up and then when you game over just walk back over the desert tile and it's fine um i haven't seen too many people do that recently though because for the most part people aren't game overing uh they've gotten a lot better if they are it's usually because they burned too many uh, death abuses and had something bad happen yeah because even game over, that's just similar to pressing up an A. And yeah. that that was something where I never knew about, or I, at least I didn't remember about the up an A trick. Uh -oh. And when I... It looks like... Did we just lose Chroma's stream, maybe? Or... I wanted to, to peek his actual lose... stream, but uh, I think his cart died. Yeah... Uh -oh. I think that's gonna be it. He's um, I know he's had some technical issues recently, so uh, that's rough. That's unfortunate. He was doing uh, very good too. I don't remember. If, I think he was in first. Yeah, because I I think uh, he just left where Schmidt was. So um, I'm not sure what he's doing right now. Oh, I think uh, he, maybe uh, he. Hmm. I don't know if his cart might have had like a, a save or something, so it'd be interesting. I, I don't. That actually looks like what he had before he died. It might not be the case. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll let him. Maybe, maybe he was using a hotkey to make a save state on the fly, and he was just able to go back, like right before. And was he? That'd be pretty slick. That... I'd, I'd leave that up to Trav. He's the, the moderator of race time. If that's true or not. <laughs> Like I said, I know he's had some technical no. issues, though. That's interfered. Yeah, that's. He, I don't think that's the same file. So yeah, he uh, may also know his his run is wanna, dead, and yeah, he just might just want to see. Kinda... Oh, just to see what he could have done in a in a similar at yeah. a similar point. That's gonna be really frustrating though, too, because I know this is not the first, second, or third time that's happened. So, all right, but you saw he took the death abuse in that room. Um, actually, okay, I know where he is now. Sorry, I got confused. Uh, Trav didn't, he just ferried, he just took the thing and went on. I think uh, both Hippie and Schmitty, uh, yeah, neither of them took the death abuse either, I think. Or maybe Hippie. No, Hippie didn't. He just didn't ferry either. So... All right, I, some of these things are more interesting to me because it's like the meta strategies of what the players are doing. Because uh, if you take out those sorts of strategies, then it's a lot of it's just bag luck and you know the the way that you fight everything being somewhat similar. Because uh, Zelda Two can at times be a bit of a walking simulator. Uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, we're at the town part, and then there's just town. And it's like the overworld is all about dodging encounters and, and manipulating that. And then you have these these areas where there are some strats. There's optimal ways to get through things. Like to Schmitty. me, the really wonderful thing about the game is all of the one-on-one -on -one encounters you have with the monsters, uh, especially in the palaces, where it's like it's you, it's Link and this Iron Knuckles one-on-one -on -one in a battle to the death. And I think that's something that's done really well in this game is is learning all of the combat in order to, to triumph in all those one-on-one -on -one encounters. Yeah, and then yeah, getting those boss fights down, I mean, the bosses and then the individual ones matters a lot to being able to speedrun this or to really enjoy it. Like, there's, there's some games where speedrunning it makes the game tremendously more difficult. Uh, Speedrunning this game makes it easier, unless you're purposefully making it more difficult. Um, 
seven. Chroma is the first one out of P2. He actually ended that whole path really well. Uh, ow. It it's like Schmitty got himself stuck a little bit going for... Uh... Can he get it? Okay, he got it. That was he went for that jar, but it kind of went rough. He knows he's almost out of out of life. And um, <laughs> let's see, can, is Chroma going for the uh, fanfare skip? Yep, he got it. I don't know if you you saw that. Um, it's something you can do when you level up. If you hit an encounter screen or a, a, not an encounter screen, but a regular um, fight and your experience is almost, like if it's within like 60 points, it'll go so fast that if you hit the button, it'll completely skip the fanfare on the level up, which saves about two seconds. Well, it saves a little bit more than two seconds, but doing it on purpose usually lose a little bit of time. So that usually saves about two seconds. But if you screw it up, you'll soft lock. So uh, <laughs> I think uh, Chroma and React are the only two people I've seen purposely go out of their way to do it. Is so that more of a TAS only trick where you would probably never do that in a serious run except to except to show off that it can be done. Yeah. Um and Chroma went Oh, because he's using a file again. Hey, are you? So he just went and tried to learn the shield spell again. But he is tracing the route the way he's supposed to. And his experience is basically on point, so... Again, I would say this is one of those situations that's probably up to trap what he wants to do. It's good backup. Just have saves in, like, every room in case your thing crashes. <laughs> um, actually, I think he lost a room or two when he loaded that save. Plus yeah, it time. was. It did look like it was a little bit further back. I think I remember him coming left out of the elevator and then watched him do that same thing again. Mm -hmm. Ouch! Didn't hit. The, didn't have fairy ready and fell right onto the the, uh, <laughs> the, the dealers on the ground. Let's see, they, so, yeah. they. I was gonna say they definitely gave the enemies some weird nicknames for these first two Zelda games. Mm -hmm. I feel like this one is worse than the uh, the uh, the original when it comes to bizarre names. Yeah, the, the other three were in the same room just a moment ago. Uh, our, our people who were trailing, I think Schmitty and Hippie, um, both had very good walk, I think, out of P2. I don't know. I can't remember exactly what was happening, but I thought Trav was second place by quite a bit. You know what? I actually have that backwards. Schmitty right. was right behind him, and he had a bad walk, so. Sorry. Sorry, everyone in chat. I'm fucking <laughs> up. Yeah, because it looks like Trav is has pulled ahead a little bit here. Maybe even by more than 15 seconds. And he's got a couple of screens at this point. Uh, the, the one thing to, to note about this, and this is more of a technical matter, uh, Trav's stream is probably... Uh, everybody else probably has at least a couple seconds of lag compared to him. So he's actually ahead of where they are um, by virtue of the fact that he's hosting it. So his stream is accurate to him where everybody else is looped like onto his internet. So they're all just slightly behind where they actually are on the screen. But so it's a minor can, thing. Wait, basically when we get to the end, if we see that Trav is uh, has won There's by about three seconds, we might need to and wait and is. see what the uh, what everyone's actual time was based on the splits they're keeping. Yeah, well, and they are actually uh, racing on Race Time GG itself, so there is an oh, okay. external race source. I'll post that here in chat in case anybody wants to uh, to look at it. Um, there's not anything you can really do there except just kind of see their their results. But uh, that's the, the website that pretty much all Z2 goes through nowadays. Uh, it used to be speedruns live, but the um, you know, I, I really need to get into that. And Chroma, I don't know if he reset on accident or what happened there. He seems to be back into uh, P2. Yeah, and he just officially forfeited. So, I don't know what happened there. 
Who knows? Maybe he was just having some fun, trying to do some do some tricks and stuff, and then yeah, maybe he just wants to keep his screen going with some activity since he is live right now. But yeah, maybe you know, just wanted to go do something else, or once he screwed something up, was was done with that file. I didn't see exactly what had happened when he when he reset, but. He probably knew that that it wasn't going to count, and, or maybe even he thought that it maybe still could count, but something happened where at that point he was just unable to unable to make a serious run at it. Yeah, Trav is in the. Uh, he got through the bot lava room where you see Hippie and Schmidt. Yeah, that's. Uh one of the more dangerous rooms in this run or even in LPs because the bots are random and they can just knock you into the lava and there goes your run. So this uh, this could matter in the grand scheme of things. A death here might change something. Uh, you saw Hippie die. He took that one on purpose. Uh, that's another death abuse room or a fairly common one. Fairy through, let the, the blue IK shoot you dead, which uh, you just saw Schmitty do too, so... He came back in. Yep, that is that is 100% on purpose. Trav did not do that, uh, which has actually helped the other two catch up to him slightly. But it might not matter that much anyway. Schmitty is having some trouble with the bot lava room. And Hippie is right on Trav's tail. They're about two seconds apart now. See, I gotta change up some stuff with my monitors. Trav's chat is kind of being blocked by uh, something else on one of my other screens. Uh, you need to do miles uh, going. Let's see here. Oh, and the, the level up for Schmitty. Uh, you'll see these guys will actually sometimes skip the levels. Sometimes they'll go for them. It kind of depends. Trav took a level and that let Hippie slide past. Um, so if he takes a level, it kind of even out, but he might not. Uh, 623 is pretty solid to get through here. Uh, the fact that Trav has one less attack level could make the Rebo fight a little bit slower. And that could prove to make the difference here. Uh, in now that's what? something... That, that right there is something I have wondered about when watching these speedruns. Just on Hippie's screen right there, I saw that he broke the first set of bricks the with the blue one behind them and then approach the red one like i always wonder why is it not faster to break the second set of bricks so you don't have to break the last two at the bottom again and then no, also not have the uh, blue iron knuckles chase you while you face the red iron knuckles um it's a good question but I'll get back to that in a moment. Like Hippie Hippie just... Has, yep, he has finished with a final time of 37.39. He had a very good final fight there. See Schmitty doing the butt stabs on reveal. It's a, a common thing to see these two runners do. <laughs> Trav White has finished with a time of 37.52, and Schmitty is in at 38.01. So, very close race there at the end. And it looks like, uh, yep, yeah, Hippie is in first, Trav second, Schmitty third. Um, Chroma had probably close to a minute lead uh, if you take out all those technical glitches that really just kind of botch things for him. So it's unfortunately he was doing very well, but... Um, oh, sorry, Middling Penguin. This is a West Coast race run. It only goes to um, to finish to fight the Rebo. It's everything you would do in an all-keys run, clearing the west part of the map. And the reason why is this is basically practice for all keys runs um, because it's really annoying to die at the beginning <laughs> of runs and have to reset a lot. Nope. In fact, almost all of us are in the Eastern uh, in EST. At least that I know of. I know Trav's in the Central Standard. Uh, Hippie is in some sort of European time zone. Very sleepy, probably, at this point. <laughs> um, 
I don't remember where Chrome or Shady is, but I think they're all EST, so. But yes, we're gonna be switching over. Sorry, uh, the, the question you asked, uh, Shadow, I think Chosen answered it in chat if you want to take a peek at that. But we'll be trans uh, transferring over to Horsehead Percent. Now, uh, I think everybody who's in this is going to continue. Uh, hopefully Chroma doesn't have the, the technical issues and everything's good. Okay. I, <laughs> looking at the screen doesn't really <laughs> uh, look good, but... Um, but this is a, a, a good thing to point out. We are doing these horsehead races specifically in anticipation of, well, one, I mean, because it's fun. Uh, and the horsehead race itself means going directly to uh, fight horsehead. So they go straight to P1, they get the minimum amount of keys, and they go straight in. So, and that's what they do. Uh, and these are going to be like sub four minute races, right? Uh, yes. Ideally, it's sub three. Uh, it'll go real fast, and it's basically task strats. Like, you were trying to get through this with no mistakes. Uh, oh, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for the compliment. So, what, what you'll see in what we're doing this, like, it's hard to talk about much of what's happening because it's going to be done very quickly. Uh, but this is all in, in anticipation of the, uh, uh, excuse me, Horsehead Knockout Tourney. That'll be happening, I believe, July 25th? Something like that. Oh, yeah, it's sub four. I'm sorry, Chosen. I forgot. It's like, I think the world record's like a 319 or something like that. 320s are pretty common if everyone's doing, like, in the 32X, if they're doing their best. And uh, these four are all extremely good at this category. It's not the most popular category on uh, um, in in this particular thing in the you know the the greater Zelda two experience, but it is very uh, well loved by the people who are in it. Three twenty. Okay, my apologies. Um, but yeah, we're looking at Schmidt. Oh, never mind. I said it didn't get uh, approved. It did. So our leaderboard. Is dude is in first. Um, Schmitty is in second. Hippie is third. Trav White is fourth, and Chroma is seventh. But I don't think Chroma has been grinding this in a particular fashion. So we have some of the best people in the world at this particular category in this race. <laughs> right side strats. And of course, it's fun to have a series of races. Like if they were going the whole way through an all keys run, then we'd still be watching them race. Whereas if you do a shorter West Coast race and then some horsehead races, you can get a you can get a handful of races in on the night in the same time it would have taken to do a complete game. Right. <laughs> That's almost correct, chosen dude. Holds <laughs> almost all the Z two world records. I think there is a couple in the uh, category extensions that he doesn't have. Like, Chroma has the world record for... Oh, you know what? We started. No time to talk. They are underway. <laughs> so, this will be quick. Um, again, because of lag, because of how tight this is going to be, looking exactly at what they're doing, uh, the, the result may not be what it looks like, because they could be within frames of each other. So... Um, so yeah, the fact that Trav looks to be a little bit ahead is expected because, again, he has less lag than the other ones. But what's important is to watch what they are doing correctly and what they're making a mistake on. Most run category is all keys. Like, their Schmitty hit an encounter. That's, like, that basically puts him in a spot where somebody else has to make a mistake for him to uh, have a shot. People yeah. like a hundred percent all keys. I, I, I tolerate it. <laughs> I'm not very good I, at it. I, I definitely think all keys is the. Oh, Trav missed that key in the first stab attempt. Yeah, that's about and a second. And only. Half. Yeah. Not too much, but could be significant. 
and, and you'll see nobody's getting any experience. The optimal route involves uh, basically, I think, killing nothing. I don't remember. No, I, yeah, I think you you either have to kill one skeleton or you kill nothing the entire time. I can't remember for sure which way it is. But you'll see, like, they're not First. stopping right now. They're just straight right. Everything is coming at them. They're new king. You get to see some really high level strats like Kippy doing the, the backwards beam there. Awesome. And of course, they're just mowing through all the obnoxious tin suits. Oof. Schmitty's having a rough time again. Chroma fought one of the skeletons briefly, which slowed him down. I think Trav did too. I would say right now it looks like Hippie might have the advantage. Although, I don't know. Chroma looks like he's in the lead on the screen. So, oof. Missed the key. Apologies if I, I'm saying oof. That's more like a, a reaction. I don't mean to say anything that sounds like I'm deriding any of the runners. <laughs> This is, this is a category about complete perfection, so like you see Trav attacking each one of them and then jumping past them. He got through it a little quicker than Chroma did. He slowed down a little bit, too. Hippie took some hit. And he just... Yeah. That's a lot of fun to watch how they just wait for the uh, Hammer Brother to jump and then run right under him. Yep. It's so like Chroma... Some... Chroma took a life too. That's a little interesting. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. He probably just it's just as quick almost to take it than it is. In, than it's and this not. is close on the uh, horse head fight. Oh, Chroma was going for he's going for the right side strats, uh, which didn't really work out unfortunately. But um, just run straight through him. Okay, let's look at the timer. Let's see who finishes where at the, the race open. Trav White is in, 329 in first place. Hippie's at 332 in second. And it looks like our other two are just finishing up as well. I'd never actually seen anyone take on Horsehead from the from the right. I didn't see what happened to Chroma though. Did he maybe take a death there and have to fight him again? Because it looked like he had started over. Yep. So yeah. Schmitty finished third with a 345 and Chroma with a 354. Yeah, uh, Schmitty died and Chroma both died, and that's, you know, significant time losses. What Chroma was doing uh, is a strat that Dude does in the world record, and I don't know if anyone else in the whole thing does it because it's so hard. Uh, yeah, it's a right side kill, but you have to hit him at just the right spot to get knocked to the right side, so you only take one hit. Chroma went to life too. I think so he could tank a second hit to make sure he got through, but then um, still had the, uh, the the troublesome part. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> Chroma has worse brain. Said by Chroma himself. <laughs> well, and thank you, chosen, for the uh, explanation on the. Uh, on the brick breaking there. That had yeah. been something I was scratching my head about watching watching these speed runs for a while. But now it makes perfect sense. If you go down through the first set of bricks, you can you can create an opening in the second set of bricks on the way down as opposed to having to create the opening to get to the second set of bricks at the top. Yeah. But Yes, GG, everybody. It was a uh, call out the practice one. I mean, it counted, but now everybody's in the groove and everything will go perfectly. Uh, we hope for everybody. So, race number two, the room is open. I think I got in there before Trav even joined somehow. Uh, we're still doing horse head percent, middling penguin. We're going to do this. Um, this will be it. Whenever we're done with this, it'll probably be the end of the night for the, the races. Normally, this is a West Coast race. Um, no, probably not tonight. Night, Joe. Thanks for dropping in. Hopefully we'll see you here for one of these races again soon. See what emotes. 
And in order to do this and have it sync up with race time, are they all playing on a certain ROM, or are they all playing, uh, are any of them playing on uh, on an NES or an uh, original think, hardware of any kind? Uh, I believe Chroma Trav and Chroma and Trav are playing on original hardware. I think Schmitty plays on Emu. Emu. <laughs> I don't remember what Hippie does. Um, I oh he plays on. Emu too, because uh, Hippie actually plays on keyboard. Uh, it's very unique in that sense, which there's parts where you might look at it and think that, that looks like somebody playing on a keyboard, but there's also certain strats that are basically rendered impossible. Now, none of them are in this uh, particular run, which is good. All right, five seconds to start. Here we go. Four minutes to victory. Yeah, so it looks like Trav has just about four seconds, uh, four seconds on the others due to the latency. Yep. And uh, the differences in this, I mean, there's very little when you watch it, but right at the beginning, you'll see a couple of the people go left, a couple of people go right. Uh, it is actually quicker to leave left by a frame or two. So it is a time safe to go left, but the encounters that come out are different and you have to move a little bit more to dodge them. So uh, considering the very small time difference, people are pretty much just picking whatever is most comfortable for them. Uh, I'm a left side person myself, but I'm the category I'm more used to does that. So That is something I was used to, or I was, that I was wondering about, but I just got so used to seeing it in speed runs that I knew that it must, for some reason, be faster. And I was always thinking, like, well, you want to go to the right, right? Because the path is, you, you go right on the path and you come out. And then I realized that, well, you have have the loading screen where you can change the direction you're pressing. So it must favor the left side. And that's why people walk out the palace on the left side. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to move for left either, Chosen? I, it's been a while, I don't really remember. I think I've been mostly doing, uh... Like, I still have the Resurrection of Ganon speedruns in my head, and that that's kind of got me thinking about a whole... Like, a third different way, I suppose. So, never mind then. Resurrection of Ganon, that's a mod, right? Yeah, it's a ROM hack. I I, I made a, a run, a speedrun of it because I liked it, and I wanted to show it off at... Uh, some stuff, and then uh, it's still there if anybody wants to speedrun it and try to beat my time. It is beatable. Um, I probably could beat it by five minutes if I got back to it and focused, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, right now I would say, just looking at it, Chroma and Schmitty are probably right with Trav. Hippie got slowed down a little bit in the that first room on the left. Thanks to some very bad bot movement, but he took a safe route and just killed them instead of trying to damage boost through them or anything like that. So, Hippie also killed the uh, the knight there, which is a bit of a time loss. Ideally, you don't kill anything, but it doesn't always work out that way. Chroma is probably going to take life so that he doesn't die. At horse head, yep. So he, he oh, so lost the time. That was a, that's a race strategy and a run that would be a reset. And it looks like it's pretty close to a tie between Trav and Schmitty. Account yeah. for the few seconds difference. And you'll see these strategies when they fight them. There's a very <laughs> Chroma's still going for the left, which is it's faster, but it's hard. The the way that you fight horse head is a little tricky. Um, which I'll get to in a second. We'll see where they finish here, because they're going to be coming in any moment now. Uh, oh, it looks like we got a single second tie. Schmitty has a 331 and Trav has a 331. But it Ooh. looks like... Given if you look the at first frames, Schmitty. Yeah, looking at the frame count, Schmitty slid in just a little bit quicker. So, GG's to Schmitty, GG's to Trav. Hippie is in at a 351, and Chroma's... He's trying for that strat, yeah, and he's gonna forfeit. No one's gonna walk all the way back. So. <laughs> he's trying for those right-side strats, and 
If it works, it's brilliant, and if it doesn't, well, we, we've seen what happens when it doesn't, so. Yeah. GG to everyone, another great race. And th that's the purpose of the ROM that they're using, if you look at the frame counts. Uh, it, it, it is up there specifically because um, race time isn't good enough at differentiating uh, this sort of like frame difference, and it's possible people start slightly different. Uh, I'm good, Trav. I'm good for like 20 more if you want. I'm wound up. Uh, how do you feel, Shadow? I feel good to do another one. All right. Yeah, maybe not 20, but at least one more. <laughs> So, but Chroma's but, getting set up again. So are they using like an EverDrive or something that for uh, Chroma and Trev if they're uh, playing on playing on NES? Yeah, I think so. Um, if you ask Trav, he'll like go into a very specific detail about his hardware that I don't, I never remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I believe they're both using EverDrives or something very similar to it. Um. Which again, I think, uh, not to out them, but I think both Schmitty and Hippie play on emulator. Um, which is fine, I play on emulator. I can't be uh, bothered to do all that. Yes! You know, I responded to you not realizing that you couldn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Okie okay, doke. Sounds good. And yeah, when I was uh playing i said that i there were basically three times i tried to play this game once as a little kid in my eight single digit years and early tens pre-teens and then there was when i was in my early 20s when i said i got to the end and gave up when i realized that i had used all of the extra lives and i couldn't collect them again on the way to the great palace and then finally just a few months ago when i beat the game for the first time finally when I was in my early 20s, I was playing on an emulator, and I will admit that I learned that glitch where if you press left and right at the same time, you can zip across the screen. And sometimes I had no idea where I was sending Link. I just knew that I was avoiding fights. Wow. So I did cheese it a little bit, but yeah, if you're playing on an emulator obviously you can't use glitches like that in a, in a competitive environment like this. Yeah. I think, uh, I'm trying to see if I can find it. Um, uh, you know what? No, I, I can't. Uh, Schmitty actually has a task of Z2. It's not the, uh, like the task, but he has a task where he takes advantage of things like that and has a modded ROM too, to make, uh, um, Link look a little extra creepy. It's uh, it's wonderful to watch. It'll make you feel very uncomfortable at some point <laughs> as Link <laughs> stares at you as he zips across the screen <laughs> over and over. But it is awesome. He ha he's used that ROM in some of the races too. He's using the uh, the horse head one right now. I think did he a... use it maybe just a few weeks ago? I'm thinking I yeah I, I think... maybe remember seeing that, not knowing what I was looking at. Yeah, in the uh, the West Coast race last week, I'm pretty sure he had it up. Either that one or the the one before it, uh, which is like I said, it's wonderful to watch. He uh, he's the one that developed the tasks and all of that too. So, um, all right. So Chroma dies thrice. Let's let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, but he's um, all right. The timer is going. Five seconds. There we go. Get our horse head height. Get those uh, horse head emotes in chat. <laughs> uh, the uh, there we go. But yes, again, there will be. Uh, the hippie is not in the race. I think he he noped out. So uh, that or he just wasn't paying attention. I'm not sure. But so we just got three this time. Again. Oh, Schmitty hit the, the dealer in the cave. That's a bit rough. Anything that happens early in this is very frustrating because you you feel like I've done this a thousand times, I shouldn't have this happen, so 
Um, we saw Trav just hit an encounter too. Yeah, and Hippie is in Death Mountain, so I'm guessing he is not actually uh, running this one. Nope. He uh, he's not okay. in the race room. So he, uh, I think he's just doing um, regular attack three Death Mountain practice. Okay. He must not have been happy with what he did in the race, which tends to be how that goes. And Trav got the key! First try, third First. time. <laughs> As each of the first two, he missed it on the first stab. Yep, he got it. That, that's very easy to do on that key because uh, you have no reason to spend any more time there than you absolutely have to. They, they're all very similar. I haven't seen any slips from Chroma yet. I think we already kind of detailed what happened with Schmitty and Trav to why they've lost a little bit of time. Oof. Uh, Schmitty messed up the, uh, the the enemy skip there. And lost a little bit as well. But Link does have some hops. I'm always impressed by how he's able to hurdle all of the uh, hurdle all of the other characters, jump his own height. Mm -hmm. He would be the winner of a of a high roll, high jump. Oof! I, I got to do this again. That was another whiff on the key grab. <laughs> I'm sorry, trap. <laughs> oh. Gosh, it's uh, it is just the smallest things can you know lose the run in this, which is what kind of makes it exciting, and it's it's not that anybody could win at any time because there's definitely still some skill differences, but it is that anybody could lose at any time. Yeah. Chroma is in the lead. Will he be going for the? Uh... Will he, will he be going for the right side horse head strat again? No, Dude. and he <laughs> cannot. Uh, and that, that would be the thing. That right side strat involves taking a hit, and he, he will die if he gets hit. Let's see, they are very close. It looks like Chroma... Oh, he knocked him out of the screen just a little too far. I think Chroma still got it. Yeah. He got it. will be close between Trav and Schmitty. I believe Trav had the best fight. Let's look at the uh, the time as everyone goes through. And, oof. Chroma yeah. with a 331, Schmitty with a 334, and Trav with a 335. Just, and again, if you look at the, the frame count on Schmitty and uh, Trav, I mean, you have to be able to read Hesedecimal, which I can't, but you can gather. They were very, very close. Even though the, the I time... Can... I learned a little bit about how to read it from uh, watching Tetris, where they use Game Genie codes to let the score go over 999,999. Yeah. That's always the first digit of the score will turn into a letter. And it's like, I can comprehend that. But I was trying to look at their frame counts and and see how that's supposed to be read. And I'm like, no, oh, no, brain's going to break if you even try. Yeah. Well, I know it's uh, it goes nine, then A, B, C, D, E, F, but I so I, I can tell that Schmitty definitely finished ahead. I just uh, the frame count that would be the math I wouldn't be able to do right now. So very good. Um, Chroma Chroma got his after those first two runs, which were both kind of uh, a bit disastrous in their own way. He did it without going to life too. Um, went for the traditional, more traditional strat instead of the. Uh, quote, crazy, unquote, world record strap. But I doubt this is the last time we'll see Chroma. Uh, I, I got, we will see him go for life too again at some point because he's somebody that wants to do the, all the best strats. I'm good. That sounds good for me. I think I'm just going to run into the kitchen real quick and make myself a cup of tea, and I'll be back in, like, a uh, minute 30. <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah. Right on. I'll see you, you back doing... in just one minute here. Yeah, you guys are doing awesome. Keep at it. So 
what are we? I'm, I'm double checking our standings again. Trav won the first one, then Schmitty won the second one, and now Chroma has won the third one. Uh, and it looks like. No, I don't think Hippie's back in. He's not in the, the race room, at least. Or maybe he is. There is no race room. Never mind. We haven't made one yet. <laughs> he might be back in. He might not have realized. Or might have just been distracted for a minute. I'll tell you what. So, uh, and again, we are doing a, a knockout tournament. I say we. This is actually organized by Schmitty Games and Trav White. The knockout tournament will be... I believe it is July 25th. Let me open my... I think it's the 24th. 24th is a Saturday. 25th is... I wonder. I'll just ask in chat. Oh. It would make sense to be one of those two days if they're Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I'll just ask him. That's probably the quickest way to get a hold of him. Just ask in chat. We gotta keep talking it up though, because I mean it, it's fun because it's really short run. You can learn enough of it to participate. I mean to be at the level these guys are at requires a lot of effort, but there is uh, sort of a a NASCAR element to it where you're also kind of looking to see where the crash is going to happen because <laughs> there's so many small things that you can mess up and, and make a mistake on, and you're like, well, that's it. So even though I, I fully expect by the end of the day it'll be the best players, you know, rounding out that tournament, there's definitely... July 24th, you were right. Um, there's definitely that opportunity to, uh, to, you know, learn a run, learn real quick, something you can post up on a board uh, so you can claim to have your Zelda 2 speed run, and then also, you know, participate in something that should be a lot of fun. I believe it is going to be hosted on Zelda speedruns, so you could also get instant fame by being hosted on a channel that sometimes has 100 to 300 people watching. Uh, actually, nix that. If they're doing um, uh, Nintendo 64 Zelda, sometimes it's for 500 people. <laughs> so, um, and I've never actually uh visited there so i might need to might need to check that out yes give them a follow they they do quite a lot and they're a very it's a very good community and that they are uh like if you want to participate they're gonna let you participate in some fashion or another they, they like to have people involved they're fairly relaxed um i would this is a pg channel and i'm generally a pg person but i have it is not a PG channel, Zelda speedrun. This is not a god by rule. So, not necessarily people are going on there and being filthy, but uh, it is very loose. So. And, it, and it looks like Hippie's heading up to the starting line for this one. He's in the race room, and uh, yep, they're all ready. Everyone's ready except apparently Schmitty, who hasn't reset his game yet. He went away and didn't realize it. So, oh, he got back in time. Just He's good. Just in time. Yeah. I think he went to get a drink or something and forgot he had readied up. Maybe. You never know. Uh, but yes, we're all good again, and we're off to Parappa Palace to fight the horse. I think I was uh, watching a video of uh, Grand Pooh Bear playing his first playthrough of this game, or at least his first playthrough as an adult since he had given up on it as a kid. And when he got the horse head, he was debating whether it was actually part man, part horse, or if it was some guy wearing a horse mask. Hmm. And I thought that was that was funny just to think about. Of course, in a fantasy world like this, he might as well be a man with a horse head. You know, you never know. Maybe by the knockout tournament, somebody will have gotten their hands on a horse head mask, and we might see somebody race it with it while wearing it. And, um, 
We had another missed key grab in the lower left hand corner. I feel like I'm I'm being a jinx at this point, so I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> oh. It's hard to grab those keys. When you're in a hurry, right. it's not the thing that you're necessarily uh and when I was playing the game casually just a couple months ago, I'm like, I want to try that. I, I, I got, like, I, I see people do that. It looks so fancy when they grab the key after beating the boss, and then I'm just whiffing left and right. And then I, like, screw myself up. I can't even pick it up once it's on the ground. Yeah. It's, uh, the keys have weird hitboxes. That's probably the best way to put it. Um, I... The, uh, the key that you see in the Chewy rooms in particular, I, I, I always forget what their actual name is. I used to call them Chewies, the guys with the hammers. And um, there's one in this palace right here at the end, which they don't get in this run. And then there's one in uh, P2. Those always seem to miss. And there's something about their hitbox that it's lower than you think. Like the top of the key doesn't seem to register at all when you hit it, so... So you'd be better off aiming low, like, even right. You might pick it up if you aim right under the key. But if you actually aim for the key, then you might miss high. Yeah, maybe. I'm not I'm not an expert on this, but it just uh -oh. always seems to me like the hitbox is a little lower. Same thing with fighting Thunderbird at the end of the, the normal game. The hitbox for Thunderbird is higher than it seems. All right. Now we're going to the horse head. We'll see how they do. Uh, Trav's going with a fairly normal strat. And so are Schmitty and Chroma. Ooh. Schmitty drew him out Trav. a bit more. Oof. Oh no, Trav took a death. Yeah, he was in the pole position there, but got on the wrong side and just couldn't get the that fight down. So Trav and Hippie are probably neck and neck. And it's like Chroma. Yes, <laughs> Chroma got it by two seconds, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yep, Chroma's in at 328, Schmitty in at 330. It looks like it was right at the end there, too. I didn't see what happened, but I think he either missed the key or something, and that was enough to kind of be the difference. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the, the, key, the key boss, that's the final boss of this run. So, Hippie is in at a 3.55 and Trav in at a 3.56. So, very tight finish there at the end. Everybody but Chroma had some trouble with the key boss at the end. But, <laughs> he got it in. <laughs> and that's the thing, you could, you could just wait, stand next to it, hit the key, you know, nice and then move. But there's all these swag moves and stuff you can do. So you want to save every possible frame you can. And then when you whiff it, you just feel really, really dumb. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, then you wind up losing a little bit of time by going for the the fancy key grab and, and missing it. Yeah. It was uh, a lot of this. <laughs> uh. So GG's to everybody again. Another great race. Chroma got the last two after starting off pretty rough and losing the uh the run in west coast that he was dominating but uh get some get some uh redemption wins the last two races and uh yeah all in all pretty good i don't think there was any major disasters there were some deaths but i don't think we even saw anything over a four uh no uh, uh, everyone everyone that got finished was under four minutes i think yeah oh good deal uh, <laughs> Everyone whiffed on the last one except Chroma. <laughs> oh my gosh, I went all the way through Horsehead. How bad was that? I thought briefly that was a strat, but... <laughs> it was not. <laughs> I looked over yeah, then... at my screen to see where everyone else was, and I was like, oh, Chroma is really, really close. And, um, yeah, I whiffed. Well, yeah, and I saw that you took the first hit from the club, and then next I saw is you were, uh, you were falling on the other side of them, and, and then just 
and find his hitbox again from that side. Yeah, it's it's really hard to uh, fight Horsehead from the right side. Uh, dude does it in the world record strat, and I don't know how he does it. He's he's a machine because I have tried and tried and tried to do right side Horsehead, and I cannot do it reliably. Yeah, it's a. Uh... Um, I was just saying, Schmidt or not Schmidt, uh, Chroma tried on the first two runs. He went and got life two and then tried to fight from the right side, and it just didn't work out. Uh, ended up pretty rough, but we gave up on that and then won the last two races. So I don't know. I have a feeling we'll see him try life two or to try to attack from the right side again. But the uh, the horse head strats, the way that you fight where you like bear where you like don't tap right once you jump and you know attack with the sword immediately all that really precise stuff is very difficult to suddenly learn from the other side oh schmitty's got there's the sprite <laughs> <laughs> he loaded it up and uh yeah i kind of do a variation of the double hit i do a uh I guess standing slash or a uh, jumping slash into the the horse head type slash and um, I think it's gonna come down to uh, in the finals uh, one who doesn't make a mistake because if you make even the smallest mistake it it can cost you so much time every every hit is a second and a half so yeah um, what's the format of the horse head tournament going to be is that is it just going to be one and done like a bracket format or are uh, there going to be it'll be a uh one day knockout tournament so for those that don't know how that works uh we will have all the racers race at the same time and depending on how many racers we have uh either the bottom two uh bottom three will be knocked out we'll reset and everyone will race again. So let's say we have 50 racers. All 50 racers will race at the same time. And uh, the bottom two will be out until we get to the top 10. Um, the top 10 will work the same way, but it'll be most likely the bottom one will be out. And... Uh, that's where we get into if uh, a lot of people all finish at the same time, then we'll get into the frame counting and stuff. And that's uh, React uh, made us a ROM where it frame counts for us. So mm -hmm. uh, those using that ROM will be able to use the frame counter. Uh, if someone's not able to use that ROM for whatever reason, uh, we will just uh, frame count the uh, the actual run. Uh, we do have the leeway in there that, like, let's say we're going to drop the bottom two and the bottom three are, like, all within a frame of each other. We'll just, we'll just do a re-race, and uh, it's basically until uh, we get a winner. All right, that'll be exciting when, when that comes around. Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping we have. Uh, I'm hoping we break race time. We have so many racers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would be. I think. What was it they did for? Uh, was it Nintendo Two Zelda or something like that where they had like a few hundred and it crashed it? I can't remember what it was anymore. I want to say that was the Ocarina of Time tournament. They tried to have uh, like 250 people run at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't that didn't work so well for them, but uh, it's a good story. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I want to thank you, Aaron. I want to thank you, Shadow, and uh, most of all, thank you all the racers and chat for coming out. But uh, I'm gonna sign us off here. Uh, we're gonna all go to sleep thank or you, you whatever too. you decide to do. Thank you, Aaron, for the bits. You're awesome, and. Uh, we will see everyone uh, next Monday, and uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll do a West Coast race, and then uh, we'll do some horse head races until the comms kick us off. <laughs> uh, All right. Sounds you, good. Uh, thanks Either a lot, guys. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thank you for letting me ramble for a bit. Uh, same, same here. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate both of you. Uh, it takes... Uh, 
quite a few people to make all this work, and I appreciate all of y'all's hard work. Y'all are awesome. Alright, thank you. And, and with that, I'm gonna cut stream. Y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all next Monday.